Hello, my name is Chayna. I'm a medical cannabis patient. I partake of cannabis on a regular basis for PTSD, arthritis in both my knees and ankles, social anxiety, and a few other conditions you can learn more about through watching the previous shows on this channel. This is the Productive Cannabis Connoisseur, a channel dedicated to medical cannabis patients and adults 18 and older. So I just literally woke up. <laughs> it's noon. I slept in. And it's Easter. I didn't know that today was Easter. Um, I don't celebrate Easter, but um, <laughs> I do have some stories to tell from my childhood during Easter. So I think I share some of that with you guys while smoking a joint and waking and baking. <laughs> um, and uh, I've already talked about what I think about Easter and how it was... Uh, Create it, <laughs> so I'm not gonna go there. Um, if you would like to hear my views on that, um, <laughs> you can request a video through donating to my PayPal, my Google Pay, or my Cash App. So, um, yeah, because uh, some of the things I have to say about the holidays, uh, national holidays, that a lot of people want to hear, and especially now because of uh, the pandemic and everybody is clinging on to each holiday. In order to connect with their family even more and more. So, yeah. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for joining me. I'm smoking on a combination of strains. Hashberry, chocolate hashberry. <coughs> <coughs> A strain called Unicorn, and, um, what's the other one? And Sour, Sour Cookies, yeah. So. When I was a kid growing up, um, I thought the Easter made no sense at all. <clears throat> I didn't understand it, and where it came from, and all this, um, I went to Sunday school as a kid, and I wasn't explained really explained well enough for my um, <laughs> for my benefit. I felt like I needed more info about this holiday that we, as kids, uh, partake in. This with you might as well call it a ritual where you um, the parents hide the eggs. They boil these eggs, right? Paint them different colors. Sometimes the kids help. Sometimes they don't. And then we hide these eggs in all these different places for the kids to find. They find the egg, they crack it open and eat it. It's boiled eggs. Um, I was not very, very much the big fan of eating the eggs, but I liked painting them. And, you know, being an artist, putting all these cool designs on it. And then when I watched a special on PBS when I was a kid on Fabergé eggs, I was like, damn. Well, of course, I was a kid, I wasn't cussing, but... <laughs> I cussed a lot inside my head, though, as a kid. <laughs> but I thought, wow, that's taking it to a whole nother level. A Fabergé egg. Fuck this regular uh, chicken egg, you know what I mean? <laughs> Save the baby chicks and uh, just make yourself a Fabergé egg. You bring that out during, <laughs> during Easter. You wouldn't be hiding those, huh? Fabergé eggs. <laughs> Oh, this is good. Yeah, um, and I remember eating too many of those eggs and getting really sick. And then after that, I didn't want eggs any boiled eggs anymore. I just didn't. Uh, yeah, it's, it was bad. <laughs> it was really bad. And they're like, you got to find all the eggs. And I'm like, but I don't want to have to eat all the eggs if I find them. You know, it's like, ugh. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, uh, my memories of, um, of Easter as far as chocolate goes, I would get the chocolate Easter bunnies that are hollow and not solid. And the chocolate Easter bunnies that are hollow tend to seem like they have wax added to them and stuff and all weird because it doesn't taste like real chocolate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like the solid chocolate bunnies. Oh, man. And 
my mom, <laughs> she tried her best, I think, you know, I mean, she was working full time at the same time too, so, and taking care of kids, um, I come from a family of nine, I'm nine of nine children, so, and I'm the last child, uh, and she's trying, I told she could tell she was trying hard, you know, <laughs> but um, I really wasn't into the boiled egg, <laughs> having to eat the boiled egg, the candies that were given out was just hollow. <laughs> But she tried, you know, she wanted to help us with holidays. And I think a lot of the times these holidays um, are celebrated because children go to school. Well, I don't know about now. Now it's all crazy and weird because of the pandemic. But children would go to school and we would uh, always be uh, told about these holidays and um, doing activities to celebrate these holidays. And it's just like... Um, do it, you know, just do it, because this is what you're supposed to do. This is your assignment. We didn't really go into any further um, history about Easter or anything like that that I can remember as a kid. Um, they just say this is what you're supposed to do. It's tradition. You do it, you know. I think it's unhealthy to uh, just tell somebody to do something and not, like, regardless of how, what age they are, and not explain to them why they have to do this. You know what I mean? It's like it's mandatory or some shit like that. I'm going to take the filter off of here. Here we go. Yeah, um, and then when you go back to school, people ask you, what did you get and all this stuff. Some people would get new spring clothes and things like that, too, for Easter. I didn't get any of that. I got, like, um, a bunch of Easter eggs I had to eat, those boiled eggs, um, a hollow bunny. <laughs> and that's about it, you know what I mean? Um, and I compared myself to the kids uh, in school because um, I had hardly nothing, and they had what I felt like it was everything. You know, um, every toy, every trendy candy or whatever that was around, these kids had it and I didn't have it, you know, and it made me feel like less than, you know. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's, that was like how it was for school to me, like. They separate you in all these different categories and <clears throat> based on your supposed intelligence or lack of intelligence. And if you are seen or deemed to see, see, be seen as like someone who is not very smart, then they will make a, uh, a mockery of you, I feel like. It's happened. And that wasn't a good memory. And I connect, do connect that with Easter too. I mean, these holidays these Hallmark holidays. I know people are celebrating them because it gets them uh, closer and closer to their family, something that they have in common that they can celebrate. And uh, <clears throat> But I just don't feel connected to it. I don't. I just don't feel connected to it. Um, and that's okay. I don't have to. You don't. You don't have to. It's like you can and you can't. You know, you don't, it's not like something that's... Um, forced upon you only when you're a child though <laughs> only when you're a child uh, are you forced to do things that you really don't want to do and a lot of times kids don't want to do these things because parents aren't explaining to them why they're doing it it's this ritual where you're hiding hiding eggs everywhere and shit like that you know it's <laughs> as I got older I understood what the egg represented fertility and I understood it, the rabbits and and the whole, all of that shit. I understood what it was all about. When you look back deep into history, you can see where it all started. And um, I'm not going to hear sit here and tell you how it all started, because you can find that out on your own. And as I said, if you'd like for me to do a video about that, I can do a separate video just talking about that. <clears throat> but, um...
I'm not trying to tread on anybody's religion either. If you uh, are a staunch Christian, I think that's cool. If that's what you're, where your uh, path lies, it's. I think that's awesome that you have that figured out. Um, some people have different paths that they walk. And some people just don't celebrate these specific holidays for specific reasons. Uh, <clears throat> and um, I've talked about this before with uh, like Valentine's Day and all these hotspot holidays. Valentine's Day, Easter, Christmas, um, Halloween, Samhain. All these holidays um, are just changing of the season holidays. And with each holiday, um, it helps you to recognize what's going on in your world and in, in your outer world too outside of your home how the weather changes the the flowers start to bloom and blossom and and uh, the worms are coming up out of the ground <laughs> we just had a worm moon just a few um, days ago a, a full moon that was called the worm moon and the worm moon just represents spring coming up but things busting up out of the uh, out of the earth because it's warm and they could come out and get some sun you know you go up to the river you might see a little lizard bathing himself in the sun all these all this this cold winter um, shaking all that off and exposing its skin to the sun um, I've seen something like that I've seen a lizard just sitting on a rock during the springtime just chilling and getting some sunlight on him <laughs> yeah um, I just, I'm more of a, um, a lover of nature, of the, the changing of the seasons, uh, connecting with Mother Earth, <clears throat> and uh, there's a duality in this world, both male and female, uh, powerful uh, forces that, um, that are here with us, and I can feel like that with each change in the season, you know, there's gods and goddesses connected with each season, and... <clears throat> That's what I connect with. That's where my spirituality lies. Um, I do feel like uh, there's a place for every religion in this world, but not everybody wants to follow all these religions. Um, I'm I'm more of a, a pagan, and I've talked about that before. What that means to me. Um, back in the day, people would think that's something negative. Now people think it's cool to call themselves that, but they don't really know what it means. Um, well, a lot of people don't know what it means. Not everyone. That calls himself that. <clears throat> um, yeah, I connect with many different types of gods and goddesses through meditation, through my own little private rituals that I do. Um, and a ritual for me doesn't have to be extremely elaborate. And it can't be really because of where I live and how I live in a one bedroom apartment. So, <laughs> in a uh, cramped environment. And uh, the closest I can get to going to nature that's like nearby is going up to the park and i've been finding and appreciating uh the value in having that park because if i go up there and it's quiet like during the weekday <clears throat> it's very very nice to just sit there out in the grass with the sun on my skin and communing with the gods and goddesses even if you think about them and you like you know burn an incense or light a candle or even just thinking about them brings about their essence and their energy towards you and you feel protected in love. Um, I, um, <laughs> I have I had a lot of things to say about this holiday um, years ago but now I don't because I understand why people get excited and happy and celebrate it because that's what they got you know this is what they know this is their tradition this is what they've been doing for years and years and how their family uh, can connect so I respect that but my experience of Easter hasn't been um, rosy and, and sweet you know I wasn't getting a bunch of stuff and and having grandparents over and all this kind of stuff that's associated with this holiday um, I didn't have that kind of existence so I can't really connect with that holiday uh, like a lot of people can. Uh, you know, making a big dinner and, and all this kind of stuff. Um, I just really more connect with the season, the changing of the season. That it's spring, <clears throat> it's getting a little warmer. Actually, it's kind of cold right now, but <laughs> it's getting a little warmer. And um, 
Let's see if I find my sweater. It's not warm in here. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I appreciate and and uh, respect those who who have their own religion that they feel helps them out in this world and helps them understand the things that are going on in this world. My hair. <laughs> I think that's cool if, if, if it works out for you, but that doesn't work out for me. I've talked about my my experience with going to the church and all of that, and I don't need to go over that right now in this video. And if you want to learn more, you can look at my past videos, and you can also request a video by donating to this channel. So, yeah, um, it's... Um, People get excited about this holiday, just like any other holiday. And a lot of times, people are um, are off, you don't have to go to work on this holiday, so they really are celebrating it. So they don't have to uh, do anything but relax, hopefully. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I, I wish everybody um, blessings. And happiness and joy and a stress-free uh, environment all the time not just on the holidays I think observing um, really learning about these holidays you celebrate is important and why you're celebrating it um, and it nice it's nice to know the history of it but some people don't really care about the history of these major holidays that we celebrate because they just like okay it's it's a time for me to get together with my family that's first and foremost. Everything else is secondary. And um, that's fine. I'm not here to judge anybody. But a lot of times when I say that I don't celebrate these major holidays, people get miffed like I'm a mutant and I don't, I'm not doing things right. Well, here's the thing is that um, <laughs> people get hooked in a routine of what they do all the time and that's and sometimes routine can be good but um, these traditions and so because it works for them it makes them feel good and whole then it should work for everybody but that's not true it doesn't work for everybody um, <clears throat> some people just believe in celebrating and being spiritual every single day of their life and not just for one specific day so people think, oh, I'm supposed to just be all nice and kind on Christmas, and then after Christmas, I can be a jackass, you know what I mean? There's certain people that act like that. I've noticed that, and I've witnessed that through the years, uh, observing these holidays and how people react when these holidays come about. These holidays gain more and more power because of us, because we depend on them. We depend on them for our for a connection to our loved ones, we depend on them. So um, a lot of people depend on them because that's the only time they can get together with their loved ones is on a holiday. And now, now that the pandemic is in full sway, <clears throat> that's making people a lot more depressed if they can't get together with all their their loved ones this holiday. They do to get depressed and and sad, and <laughs> some people get suicidal about it because this is their routine this is their ritual that they do every whatever holiday and you've taken it away from them and they're sad and they're depressed and the memories that they have of this holiday tied in with it is not the same because of this pandemic it's not the same these holidays for people is not the same it's not <laughs> and what what's happening is uh, a lot of these companies are cashing in on this hopelessness, fear, and, and depression through the holiday season with uh, <clears throat> making available all of these all these products and things that you really don't need but you but people buy in anyway because the stimulus check you know flowed in. So um, yeah it's it's one of those days where um, it just feels like just another day for me really. I mean as a kid, I thought it was special, but not, you know what I mean? Because, like, maybe this year I'll get a solid chocolate bunny. But 
I didn't get one of those till I moved in with my sister here in California. <laughs> and I was a teenager by then. <laughs> so it was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I do think it's cool how, hey, let's make a part two. I'll be back because we're on 20 minutes. Thanks for joining me, liking and sharing my videos with your friends and family, and thank you for your kind comments. Leave your comments down below, and um, you can just say hi. I don't want to debate about Easter and anybody giving me a Christian sermon or anything about it. If I want to learn more about Easter which I already know all about Easter. I can I have all the resources and books at my disposal in my household. So, but anyway, I'll catch you on part two. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Uh, brightest blessings to y'all, and I'll see you in on part two.